I am still having way too much fun with like these color changing lights. So I think every update from now on, I'm gonna have the light set to green. Just add more Slytherin to this already Slytherin face. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing my second update for my Harry Potter Project Pan. If you missed my intro, I'll go ahead and throw that up in the cards. This was a lovely tag created by Christina Tang. Tang. Oops. Christina Chang. Uh, this is our second year of doing this Project Pan. Our first one was last year, and I also have a full playlist with all the products that I chose for that last year. I'll have that playlist up in the cards if you want to binge through last year's project. So I am very excited. I think... I am just about halfway done with most of these goals and I have finished one product completely and I am bringing in a new product to replace that so oh, I'm so excited so let's just jump straight in with my first update and that is with my collab palette so this is the collab eyeshadow palette in after dark and my goal was to hit shade in to hit shade was to hit pan in four of these shades last update I had baby pan in one of the shades and now I have pan in two shades so here is my palette. I have extended the pan significantly in the white shade. I think I'm going to repress this because it is getting a little hard now to actually get uh, like the rest of that out. And then I have pan here in the black shade. And it looks like that straight in a line because I've mainly been using this either as a liner or um, with an angled brush to do my eyebrows because I really do love black shadow in my brows. I think it just looks so good. So I am halfway through with this. I said I wanted to hit pan in four shades. The problem for me now is I need to pick what shades I want to focus on next, and I'm thinking of choosing the shimmery silver, the one right below the white down here, and then I really don't know which other one I want to pick. I was debating maybe doing this one and also trying to use it as like a, a bronzer. I don't know. I think I'm going to spend this next month really exploring the other shades and picking which one I really want to focus on to hit pan. Because that's how I was able to hit pan on both of these, like with daily use. So this I was using daily in my hairline, in my eyebrows, and then this I was using daily to set my eyeshadow primer all over my lid. So that's how I was able to hit pan in both of these. So I need to figure out, because I can't really do that with like the rest of these shades, I really need to figure out exactly what shades I want to focus on and how I'm going to be using them. But this is very exciting. I love opening this up and seeing the pan now. Next, let's talk about my loose shadow. So I've been working on using two of these loose shadows at least 40 times for the project, and I've actually made some really awesome progress. So here is my tracking notebook. As you can see, I have used both shades, at least now, 10 times each. So I've used CU Space Cowboy, which is the lighter shimmery green. I've used that 10 times now. And then the darker, I'm going to call it a matte with a little bit of glitter in it. It's called Evil Lurks, and I've used that 15 times. I'm really proud of myself for using this so often. I'm wearing both shades on my eyes today. I used Evil Lurks to really deepen up my outer V and just a little bit on the lower lash line. And then I, I really concentrated CU Space Cowboy just on my lower lash line to blend out the other darker shade. I love these shades, and I think I'm honestly not going to have any problem using both of these 40 times by the end of this project, which again, I have to keep reminding myself that this project goes all the way to December. <laughs> We're in July, so I have time. <laughs> I definitely have time to work on these, and I wanted to take my time with these loose shadows because I really wanted to get used to working with a different formula that I'm not 100% used to or comfortable with working with. One thing I did find out is that with any of these shadows, it was just with specifically the Natasha Denona palette that I'm going to talk about next and these loose shadows, I get fallout. So I either have to do my eyes first or do my whole face and then lay down some translucent powder before I go in. Because I have noticed if I go in and do this look and I don't lay down a layer of like translucent powder, it can stain. And it does make the look look really muddy and kind of like tired. So in order to avoid that, I've either been doing my eyes first or making sure I just have a um, loose powder set down and then once I'm done with the like lid portion I just wipe it away and then it looks so much better. So yes if I do happen to hit the goal of 40 uses each before the end of this project I'll probably swap in I want to keep to that same theme so I'll probably swap in either another loose shadow or like an individual pan single shadow instead because that's the goal for this part of the project was really to get me out of my comfort zone and using different shadows like that. Either loose, individually packaged, uh, color pop, super shock shadows, that kind of thing. So we're doing great here. Let's jump into the product I actually finished. So I have officially finished and panned an entire highlighter. I'm so proud of myself. 
And here it is! This is the Fenty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighting Duo in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. I finally used up the entire thing. So this is literally the first full-size highlighter I have ever completely used up. I was just, I loved the formula. I think this was so worth the price because I was using this, I used this in a project pan last year, used up one side, and then I used up the rest of it this year. It lasts so long. I love the formula. It looked amazing. I just, ugh. I have to stop myself from uh, buying this again because I, I have a drawer full of highlights so I really do want to work my way through and work finish some other highlights but I loved this formula it was such a good highlighter and I'm so happy that I finally finished it up so since that is done I decided to bring in I was actually on the fence about a couple of different highlighters but I knew I wanted to stick to a highlighter and I've decided to bring out one of my old holy grails so this is the Becca limited edition highlighter in Royal Glow. So this was a limited edition highlighter that came out right around the time of the Royal Wedding, um, Harry and Meghan, and I have hit pan in this. I do love this highlighter a lot. I love it enough that it was limited edition and I was actually kind of sad once I hit pan in this because I thought I was going to use it up, which I haven't yet. I bought a backup. This is the only highlighter where I have a, a highlighter with pan in it and then I have a backup. So I do have a full size backup. So thinking about that and looking through my highlighter collection, I really want to finish this up. So as you can see, it is actually pretty dark, but I think on my complexion, I have gotten paler since I fell in love with this, but I think as long as I blend this out, it won't look too bad on my complexion. And as you can see, I have used up at least half of it right there. So, I mean, there is still a lot of product left, but I do think I can finish this up. So this is the new highlighter I will be focusing on until the end of this project because I because I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. I mean, I do have six months, but that's a lot of highlighter. So we shall see. All right. And last but not least, we have my palette, the Natasha Denona Green Brown Palette. And I also decided to try and hit pan in four of these shades. I can say as of today, I have hit pan in two of them. So here is my palette. As you can see, I have hit pan in this shade right here and this shade right here. So I really love these shades and I love the look that I kind of, this is like my kind of go-to look with a lot of these shades and then my loose shadows, but I'm just so happy I was able to finally hit pan. It did take me a while. The mattes definitely last longer than the shimmers um, and they're so hard pressed that it is going to take me a little bit longer to hit pan in those. Now these two, these are both fairly hard pressed like shimmers and I've been using them quite a lot and I barely even see a dip in them. So those are actually going to be probably the hardest to hit pan in. And I was debating whether to change my selection, but I want to stick with it. Now that I've already hit pan in these two, I really want to focus and try to hit pan in the last two that I had picked for this palette. And if by any chance I do happen to hit pan in all of these shades before the end of this project, I don't want to switch in a new palette. I want to pick another shade. So um, I don't want to pick a shade though until I hit my original goal, which is going to include those other two shades. So until then, I will just try to keep using this palette, playing with it a bit more, but I'm not going to pick a new shade to try and hit pan on until I hit the original goal, which might be a while because these are very hard pressed and they're not hard to work with, but they are hard to like get onto a brush. So that is everything for this HP Project Pan update. A lot of really good progress, I think. I am excited for what I've done. I'm excited to bring in a new highlighter and I'm excited that I've hit like the halfway point in like the two palettes that I picked which is very exciting. Don't forget to check out Christina Chang's channel as well as the playlist she has put together with everyone who is doing this project and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye!